Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Food Science and Technology. I hope all are doing good. Today we are going to discuss about waste management. So the first part introduction to waste management. Waste management is all those activities and action required to manage waste from its inception to its final disposal. This includes among other things also. Those are collection, transportation, treatment and disposal of waste together with monitoring and regulation. It also encompasses the legal and regulatory framework that relates to waste management encompassing guidance on recycling etc to so first the basic question what are wastes so wastes that means also known as rubbish refuse garbage junk litter and art is unwanted or useless materials in biology waste is any of the many unwanted substances or toxins that are expelled from living organisms metabolic waste such as urea and sweat so coming to the main definition that is what is waste management waste management or waste disposal include the activities and actions required to manage waste from its inception to its final disposal this includes collection transport treatment and disposal of waste together with monitoring and regulation of the waste management process and so kinds of waste first type is solid waste Wastes in solid form, domestic, commercial and industrial wastes. Example: plastic, styrofoam containers, bottles, cans, papers, scrap, iron and other trash. So, the second type of waste is liquid waste. It means wastes in liquid form. Example: domestic washings, chemical oils waste water from ponds manufacturing industries and other sources classification of wastes according their properties that is two types biodegradable and non biodegradable biodegradable means it can be degraded example paper wood fruit others and non biodegradable that means cannot be degraded we all know that plastic bottles old machines cans styrofoam containers and others plastic so our next type of classification is based on the effects on human health and the environment there are two types hazardous and non hazardous this hazardous wastes are substances unsafe to use commercially industrially agriculturally or economically and have any of the following properties ignitability corrosivity reactivity and toxicity these are harmful non hazardous wastes these are substances safe to use commercially industrially agriculturally or economically and do not have any of those properties mentioned above these substances usually disposal problems have the next type of classification is based on their origin and type first one municipal solid waste solid wastes that include household garbage rubbish construction and demolition debris sanitation residues packaging materials trade refuges etc are managed by any municipality the second type is biomedical wastes solid or liquid wastes including containers in intermediate or end products generated during diagnosis treatment and research activities of medical sciences 
and the next type is industrial wastes liquid and solid wastes that are generated by manufacturing and processing units of various industries like chemical petroleum coal metal gas sanitary and paper etc the next type is agricultural wastes these are waste generated from farming activities these substances are mostly biodegradable the next one is fishery wastes waste generated due to fishery activities these are extensively found in coastal and estuarine areas to coming to the next type that is radioactive wastes these are wastes containing radioactive materials usually these are by products of nuclear processing sometimes industries that are not directly involved in nuclear activities may also produce some radioactive wastes example radio isotopes chemical sludge etc coming to the next type that is e waste with a name we can say that these are electronic wastes generated from any modern establishment they may be described as discarded electrical or electronic devices some electronic scrap components such as crts may contain contaminated flame retardants and some of the sorts of wastes these are residential these are commercial sources of waste then institutional treatment facilities industrial municipal solid wastes can be a major source construction or demolition then agricultural wastes coming to the treatment and disposal of solid wastes okay in the first one is composting this solid wastes can be treated by composting method it is the decomposition of organic matter by microorganisms in warm moist aerobic and anaerobic environment composting of municipal solid waste is the most simple and cost effective technology for treating the organic fraction of municipal solid waste some of the advantages of these composting these include improvement in soil in texture and augmenting of micronutrients deficiencies it also increases moisture holding capacity of the soil and helps in maintaining soil health it is simple and straightforward to adopt for source separated m that is municipal solid wastes it doesn't require large capital investment compared to other waste treatment options the technology scale is neutral composting is suitable for organic biodegradable fraction of municipal solid wastes yard or garden waste like waste containing like waste containing high proportion of lignocellulose materials which do not readily degrade under anaerobic conditions waste from slaughterhouse and dairy wastes some of the disadvantages of composting method however is not very suitable for wastes that may be too were like wet and during heavy rains compost plants have to be stopped land required for open compost plants is relatively large Also issues of methane emission odor and flies from badly managed open compost plants remain at the operational level it if waste segregation at source is not properly carried out there is possibility of toxic materials entering in the stream of municipal solid wastes The next treatment method is incineration. 
This method commonly used in developed countries is more suitable for high calorific value waste with a large component of paper, plastic, packaging material, pathological wastes, etc. Some of the advantages of this incineration method is it can reduce waste volumes by over 90% and convert waste to innoxious materials with energy recovery. This method is relatively hygienic, noiseless and odorless and land requirements are minimal. The plant can be located within city limits reducing of waste transportation. So coming to the disadvantages, this method however is least suitable of chlorinated wastes and aquaceous that is high moisture content or low calorific value waste as supplementary fuel may be needed to sustain combustion that adversely affecting net energy recovery. The next disadvantage is the plant requires large capital and entail substantial operation and maintenance costs. So skilled personnel are required for sure for plant operation and maintenance. Emission of particular chlorinated compounds in ore and metals in particulates concentrated in the ash have raised concerns. Coming to the next method that is pyrolysis. Concentrate this pyrolysis, also called as gasification process, are established from homogeneous organic matter like wood, pulp, etc. While plasma pyrolysis vitrification sorry, is a relatively new technology for disposal of particularly hazardous wastes, radioactive wastes, etc. Toxic materials get encapsulated in with in vitreous mass which is relatively much safer to handle than incinerator or gasifies ash. They are now being offered as an attractive option for disposal of municipal solid wastes also. In all these processes, besides net energy recovery, proper destruction of wastes is also endured. This process therefore have an edge over incineration. Destruction. So this process produces fuel gas or fuel oil which replaces fossil fuels and compared to incineration atmospheric pollution can be controlled at the plant level. Some of the gases emission like nitric oxide do not occur in normal operations due to the lack of oxygen in the system. So coming to the next treatment that is a landfill. These are sanitary landfills are the ultimate means of disposal of all types of residual, residential, commercial and institutional wastes as well as unutilized municipal solid waste from waste processing facility and other types of inorganic wastes and inserts that cannot be reused or recycled in the foreseeable future. Waste. So some of the advantages of landfills, the main advantages is that it is the least cost option for waste disposal and has the potential for the recovery of landfill gas as a source of energy with net environmental gains if organic wastes are landfilled. The gas after necessary cleaning can be utilized for power generation or as domestic fuel for direct thermal applications. Highly skilled personals are not required to operate a sanitary landfill. Then moving on to the disadvantages of landfill. Major limitation of this method is the costly transportation of municipal solid waste far away landfill sites. Down gradient surface water can be polluted by surface run off in the absence of proper drainage system and groundwater acquired fires may get contaminated by polluted leachate in the absence of a proper leachate collection and treatment system. 
an inefficient gas recovery process emits two major greenhouse gases that is carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere it requires large land area at times and me the cost of pretreatment to upgrade the gas quality and leachate treatment may be significant the last disadvantage is there is a risk of spontaneous ignition explosion due to possible build up of methane concentrate sorry concentrations in air within the landfill or surrounding enclosures if proper gas ventilation is not constructed next type of treatment is vermicomposting So, vermicompost is the natural organic manure produced from the excreta of earthworms fed on scientifically semi-decomposed organic wastes. Normally, vermicomposting is preferred to microbial composting in small towns as it requires less mechan- mechanization and it is easy to operate. It is however to be ensured that toxic material doesn't enter the chain which if present could kill the earthworms. We en- Next type of treatment that is used in solid wastes that is waste to energy. Even though the technology of waste to energy projects has been proven worldwide, its viability and sustainability is yet to be demonstrated and established in the country. The main factors that determine the techno-economic viability of waste to energy projects are quantum of investment, scale of operation, availability of quality waste, saturatory treat requirements and project risks. The next type of treatment that is anaerobic digestion and biomethanation. This biomethanation is a comparatively well established technology for disinfections, deodorization and stabilization of sewage, farmyard manures, animal sludges and industrial sludge. It leads to biogas or power generation in addition to production of compost that is residual sludge. This method provides a value addition to the aerobic that is composting process and also offers certain clear advantages over composting in terms of energy production or consumption compost quality and net environmental gains over this method is suitable for kitchen wastes and other putrescible wastes which may be too wet and lacking in structure for aerobic composting this plant is free from bad odor rodent and fly minens visible pollution and social resistance it has potential for co-disposal with other organic waste streams from agro based industries the plant can be scaled up depending on the availability in the waste so this method is suitable for only the organic biodegradable fraction of municipal solid wastes it doesn't degrade any complex organic or oils grease or lignocellulosic materials such as yard wastes so that is all for solid waste management treatment moving on to the liquid waste treatment here we are just discussing generally if you want me to take up the single topic of the treatment of waste management you can just comment in this comment session so yeah moving to the liquid waste this can be sewage sludge industrial waste runoff the first treatment here is the pre treatment pre treatment removes materials that can be easily collected from the raw wastes water before the damage or clog the pumps and skimmers of primary treatment clarifies that is trash limbs leaves etc so here the method used are screening and grit removal limbs so the next treatment which takes place in sedimentation tank that is primary treatment so basically sedimentation tanks are used here 
they settle sludge while grease and oil rise to the surface and are skimmed off so 50 to 70 percent of solids will settle in this tank some biological action takes place here converts converts complex organic matters to simpler substances takes place so the next step of the treatment is secondary treatment here the degradation of the biological content of the sewage takes place with aerobic biological process in the secondary treatment systems are classified as fixed film and suspended growth system in this fixed film there will be trickling filters and rotating biological contactors and in suspended growth system that gives activated activated sludge it means here in secondary sedimentation tank process takes place for 2 to 3 hours and at the end the product will be sludge then that sludge digestion and disposal happens and as a method of treatment will be done at favorable temperature and favorable pH anaerobic auto digestion takes place this method can be done by manure sea disposal landfill also the next step will be effluent disposal in this step can be done through chlorination dilution irrigation you can just go through this picture if you want to know in detail then these are the hierarchies of waste management options here the most used method and the least used method we can just see in this picture the first important hierarchy we should follow in order to decrease the waste is to make something smaller or useless resulting in a smaller amount of waste source reduction is reducing waste before you purchase it or by purchasing products that are not wasteful in their packaging or use a key part of waste reduction is conservation using natural resources wisely and using less than usual in order to avoid wastes you can reduce the amount of waste you create by choosing what rubbish you throw away this can be easy and fun just follow the simple guidelines create to reduce your waste at home school or work the next important hierarchy is reuse to use again or more than once reuse materials and items so that they have longer life spans and doesn't get thrown away after the first use many items found around the home can be used for different purposes so before you throw those items away think about what they can be reused example carrier bags and lap jars old clothes etc so coming to the next important type that is recycling to convert materials or waste into reusable material landfill are full of items that could be recycled recycling puts objects to a process that allows them to be used again some of the benefits of recycling is recycling reduces the need for landfilling and incineration recycling prevents pollution Recycling solves I mean saves energy. Recycling decreases emission of greenhouse gases that contribute to global climate change. Recycling conserves natural resources. Recycling helps sustain the environmental for future generation. Natural So what happens if we do not manage the waste? Some of the environmental effects are surface water contamination, groundwater contamination, soil contamination, air contamination, which in turn affects both human, plants, animal life. So, the next effects can be these economic effects, that is municipal well-being, recycling revenue. So, we the humans should know 
before throwing any wastes. What it may cause, how it may affect to our environment and people life, animals life, plant life. So, before throwing any wastes, keep in mind these these things so i hope this information was useful if it was please do like share and subscribe to my channel which is very important so thank you so much for watching take care Ch